Hey everybody, so I'm going to be doing an updated version of how to cut a section out of a song using GarageBand. I figured out that the last time I posted one of these videos I had a um, different version of GarageBand on my MacBook Pro. So today I'm going to be using GarageBand version 10.2.0. So, and uh, I want to preface this by saying I am no professional, this is just how I've figured it out um, based on years and years of teaching dance and having to edit my own songs for competitions and recitals and stuff like that. So first step, I'm going to drag the song that I want to cut over to my desktop. And this is optional. It's just a little easier for me to find when it's over there on the desktop. So I'll get rid of that. And now I'm going to click on GarageBand down below. And I already have it open, actually, because my computer can be a little slow. So bear with me. So this is what it will look like when you open it. Um, this is one of my current projects that I was working on before so I won't need that. So I'm going to come up to File and I'm going to select New and don't need to save those right now. So I'm going to double click on Empty Project and then this little instrument tool will pop up and I don't really need any of them. Um, it's selected on the keyboard so I'm going to just keep that and hit Create. And then we'll X out of this keyboard because we're not creating music. <laughs> And I'm going to drag these guys out of the way over here as far as possible and drag this guy down. So now I'm going to go back over to my desktop. I'm going to drag my song to the second track because that's where the green plus sign allows me to drop my music. And there it is. So up at the top, I'm going to click this down arrow and I'm going to select Beats and Time. That way I can see the actual seconds that I'm editing because when I listen to a song and I know what section I want to cut out of it, um, I do it by seconds. So now up here you'll be able to see the minutes and seconds of the song. Now if I were to play it just like this, you'll hear that there's a metronome in the background. Which we of course don't want on there. So I'm going to press this button right up here to get rid of the metronome. Um, if you use the enter button, it'll bring you back to the beginning of your song. And if you use the space bar, it will play your song for you. So up here at the top, I'm going to click on this button that looks like a pair of scissors. And that brings up the editing tool down below. You can drag this up if you'd like to see it um, a little more. You can zoom in and out. Um, I actually like it about this close because, I don't know, if it gets too close, it's harder for me to, to keep track of. So I'm going to come up here to where it says edit and I'm going to make sure that oh hold on got to select the track first then I'm going to go up to edit and I'm going to deselect um, snap to grid snap to grid is going to make, make it a little more difficult for me to do the detailed edits that I want to do so I'm going to uncheck that um, and now I'm going to go forward in the song to the first section I want to cut I'm actually going to show you how to do more than one edit on a single song so the first one I want to start my cut around 102, but you don't want to cut it right at 102 because then your transition will be choppy. Um, so I'm going to actually cut it a little bit after 102. So let's just play this. So I would want it to stop right after the word gold, but I'm going to let it go a little more. And I'm going to cut it right about 104 instead of 102. That way I can do a nice smooth transition in there. So I just came down below to the editing tool where um, the plus sign shows up. If it's too high on the editing tool, you're not able to edit it. You have to go down below, drag a little section right here, and just hit delete. So now my two sections are separate, and I want it to come back in around 109. So I'm going to play it. Right after the word glow right there is where I'm going to want it to come back in, but of course I don't want to cut it right there, so I'm going to cut it a little bit sooner. I'm going to cut it right about there at 107 and a half <laughs> and just drag this little section. This is the whole part I wanted to cut out, the first one. So now I have these two sections. Now before we put those together, I'm going to actually go ahead to the second part in the song I want to cut. Um, when I listen to the full song, I write down the seconds that I want cut out. So if I were to drag this over right now, um, the seconds would be all messed up later on. So I'm going to go forward to 201, or close to 201, I guess, and just let it play. Right about there. Um, so let it play another second or two. 
and I'm going to cut it right here, little section, delete, and go forward to about 237 where I want it to come back in. So it's right where that big music comes in, but of course I'm going to cut it a little before that so it doesn't have such a, an abrupt transition. So now I have all these different sections of music. Um, this is the big section we're keeping. We deleted that little section already. We're keeping this section. Um, this is the big section I'm going to delete, so I'm going to just click on it and get that out of the way. And now I'm going to go up to Track at the top and hit New Track with Duplicate Settings. Um, the reason I'm creating a new track is so I can drag the first um, editing section over, and we're actually going to overlap them so that we can fade them into each other, and you'll hopefully not even notice that there's a cut there. Um, but the first thing we have to do after we drag that is go up to where it says Mix and Show Automation. Um, this is going to allow us to click on the volume level and fade things in and out. So first I'll just let you hear what it sounds like without fading. Well that was rough. <laughs> so I'm going to drag it over a lot more and this is where you kind of just have to start playing with the volume. Um, now I'm going to be dragging this second dot lower to make uh, a fade but before I do that I'm going to click another time just over here randomly um, so that when I drag the volume down it doesn't mess up the third section over here later on. So I'm going to drag this down and then drag this down but now I still have the same level of volume later on. And I'm going to do a fade in on this bottom track. So let's see what this sounds like. So right where it says we can go is where I want it to come back in. That seems to be right about here. So I'm going to drag, oh that's annoying how that pops up. I'm going to drag this over and hopefully we'll get lucky here and it'll sound okay. Oh that was close, that was close. I'm going to drag it a little bit more. Um, I'm going to let this fade out just a little bit later and let this fade in a little bit sooner and see how that feels. Uh, so close. I'm going to drag it a little more. Um, this is where it's kind of tedious and you just have to play with it until it sounds right. Very close, very close. I'm going to drag it just a smidge more. I'm going to keep playing with the volume, see if it can sound right. Hey, that was pretty good actually. Um, sounded a little abrupt to me, so I'm going to just play with it a little more. That's not bad. Um, let's see, one more time. I'm going to keep it. That sounds pretty good to me. So now, my first edit is done, and I made sure that the volume is still at the same level going on because... We're going to drag this third section over to overlap with this section down below so we can try and fade this guy in. Um, so let's hear what it sounds like without the volume fade first. Oh boy, interesting. So I'm going to fast, uh, not fast forward, I'm going to drag this back a little bit. I'm going to start doing my little volume buttons. Uh, I'm going to drag this down. Now it doesn't matter if I drag it down because this doesn't have any music over here. So we're going to get this out of the way. And we're going to just start to play with this second edit and see how it goes. Right about after where it goes, da na na. That's where I want the big music to come in. Um, and this can be uh, difficult because it's going from relatively quiet music to very loud music, so we want a nice fade as much as possible. Oh, close. A little bit more with the drag. A little bit back with this. Let's see. It's pretty good. It was actually a little soon. 
I'm gonna fade this out a little bit sooner and just listen one more time. <laughs> happy with that actually. Um, so now we have two different edits in this song um, and I want to just make sure the songs that oh, the perfect length actually. Um, there are song length requirements for dance competitions so you always have to make sure that it fits within those um, time restraints which can be the difficult part. Um, so now that I have these two edits done I'm going to come up here to where it says share and I'm going to send the song to iTunes and just name it And it'll do its thing, and then it'll pop up in iTunes in its own little folder called GarageBand. And from there you can kind of save it wherever you need it in iTunes. So there it is. Um, sometimes when you listen to the song in iTunes afterwards, you might find out that you messed something up or it doesn't sound quite right. So. What I always do is I save it within GarageBand. So I'm going to hit File, I'm going to hit Save As, and I'm going to save it, you know, whatever you want to call it, just so that if you open GarageBand later on, you can go in and, and fix whatever is wrong. So that's saving right here. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, if you guys want me to do any other GarageBand videos or go into anything more specifically, please comment below and just let me know what you'd like to see. And yeah, thanks for watching.